I did not know there was a big run. I knew about the update. I had heard that right the update was coming on the third or on the first of next month. I did not know there was a big run. That's cool. You know, I'm excited for a big run. Uh, they're usually, you know, they're okay. I've had some mixed successes. Um, what's the Okay, I don't I don't care about this challenge, whatever. So yeah, um So we know the new season comes out and we've already been getting some like new weapons. We've seen the new special which is like a big shield thing. Oh, that's I was like, why can I not Okay, that. Okay, that explains it. So we know about the new special, which is like this big like wall that it's it's not a shield. I mean, you can run through it, but when you run through it, it actually makes your game grayscale, which is in theory interesting. Um, we've seen some new weapons, right? Like there's a new Sorella or there's a new undercover umbrella, which I don't think there's anything they can do to make the undercover umbrella good. There's a new squeezer, which is cool. There's a new brush. There's a new, uh, the pencil sniper weapon. And a few other things, you know. I don't know, it looks okay. I really hope the next update, because I was really, I, when I predicted it earlier in the year, my prediction at the time had been that the next Splatoon update was, right, this update was when the DLC was going to come out. And I felt like at the time that was a pretty safe get. I guess not. So part of me kind of hopes that, like, early in, like, basically February is when we get the next Splatoon DLC. But it looks like... That might happen, you know? We know, we know they've said early. But they're probably going to release the DLC around one of the updates. So I could see the DLC... You know, the seasons tend to be two months. Two months? Is it, two, is it two months or is it three months? What, whatever, I could see... It might be three months now that I think about it. I could see the new DLC coming out with the new season. So yeah, you know, it all kind of depends on what they end up doing. But I would love for the DLC to be out in like February... Cause do we know any Nintendo any Nintendo game coming out in early next year? I can't think of anything in early next year, but there might be something. Cause I feel like was Mario RPG the last game of this year? I feel Mario RPG. I don't know. There might be something coming out at the tail end of December. But it felt like Mario RPG was like the last big thing of the year. So, we'll see, I guess. But yeah, no, having Splatoon early on would be very cool. Um, anything else? 
I don't know. The new season, you know, it looks... It's whatever. You know, a new special's cool, I guess. It's just... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if any of the weapons I use will have it. Not like... You know, I remember early on in Splatoon 3's life, I was like, oh yeah, I'm constantly going to switch around which weapons I ch play. And I did that for the first, like, three seasons... And then in the fourth season, I, I found the tri slosher here and have just not switched from it since. I've been using the tri slosher for, what, three seasons now? And I just never switched away from it. Yeah. Alright, so, for today, honestly, I don't really have any news. I mean, I'll go through the sources and see if I see anything real quick. But I looked earlier and was like, okay, whatever, there's not really anything. It's post-Thanksgiving. I mean, I didn't expect anything to be announced post-Thanksgiving. So, I don't really have any news stories. But I did, you know, Rider Strike's still over... For the moment, I've been hearing stuff about the contract, um, and it seems like the strat the AI part of this the contract, which is on like page like sixty or something like that, it's not that good, right? They kind of got right, like they didn't, they may have gotten everything they wanted everywhere else, but when it came to AI and AI protections, it did not go that well. They did not get what they wanted. So while the strike. You know, maybe they might still vote in this contract. You know, it's possible. They might not. And if they don't, well, then the strike could start up again. But for the moment, the strike hasn't. So, you know, we're just going to keep talking about stuff. Even though, you know, I do hope they get everything they want. And I hope they get a good contract. Because, yeah, because last week we did do the strike list on, what, Saturday? And, you know, it went okay. You know. It was nice to just, you know, not have to worry about the gameplay and just have, like, yep, here's my subway surfers. Now we can just sit here and talk for a few hours. And, yeah, it both, it did not take me as long as I expected, but I'm actually fine with that. So, yeah. Uh, so what stuff do I have to talk about? Well, the, the first thing, just in, like, a general, like, news roundup -y way. So we know the Game Awards are in two weeks. I will not be watching. I have other plans that night. So, whatever. Instead, what do I expect to see there? Well, my first thought of, like, what could be at the Game Awards, my first thought was Silk Song. Because, you know, everyone's super excited for Silk Song. And I do think Silk Song is coming this year. Or 2024. I think it is a very high likelihood that we're getting Silk Song. However, I, I don't I don't think there's any way I can see it that Silk Song didn't go through development hell. With all I you know, I know we like to stay positive, right? That oh, you know, they let the developers just take their time, right, to put out a good product. That's really what I hope it is. But if we find out that no, actually they were they were in development hell, they suffered from some sort of feature creep, um, that um, maybe they were overworked. If any of those things happen, I would sadly not be surprised. Because I think of Sports Story. Because Sports Story was another game that was announced fairly early. And then when it came out, it was like, okay, this game wasn't that great. I still think Silk Song can be great. Don't get me wrong. I think Silk Song can be good. But when Sports Story come out, came out, people were able to glitch out of the map and find a secret room. And in that room, there was a secret development studio where it was people making the in-universe game Galf, which is like a metaphor for a golf story, complaining about how they were overworked and how the game suffered from feature creep. So I would not be, uh, sadly, sadly, I would not be surprised if Silk Song suffered the same fate. That the developers were overworked, or they suffered from feature creep, or any number of those things. I hope it's not true. 
I hope something comes out. And it's like, no, we actually took our sweet ass time. We decided to get rid of due dates. Right? That they decided to take their sweet ass time and just make a good game. Right? Kind of like you hear those stories about Mario Wonder. And one of those things that made Mario Wonder so good was that the developers didn't have a due date. They just were like told like, hey, make a game and we'll get it out eventually. I'm definitely paraphrasing it, obviously. I kind of, I would love for Silk Song to be in the same case, but I don't think that's true. I don't think, com very, very few companies outside of Nintendo have the, the resources to do something like that. So, you know, I hope the best for Silk Song. I don't think it's going. I it could still be a great game. I hope it's an amazing game. But I'm very skeptical. I'm you know, if if it wasn't for Golf Story, I would probably be way more optimistic. But after what happened with Sports Story, I'm way more worried about it. Right? That's your that's your red flag. That's your bad omen that people should be worried about. So I'm am just saying it now, you know. I really I know I've been wrong about things like this in the past, Ple uh, kind of. Usually not about stuff like this specifically, but with predictions. But I I hope I'm wrong about this, but I'm probably not. Cause yeah, I that would not surprise me at all. But no, do we still Silk Song at the Game Awards? Cause I do think it's coming out next year, so I think it's very high likelihood. Because, you know, Jeff Keighley knows that everyone wants Silk Song. We had that indie showcase last week. Number one thing's trending on Twitter, Silk Song. Even though it was obviously never going to be there. So, Jeff Keighley getting Silk Song at his big Game Award showcase. And getting a release date for us would be, right, that would be great PR for him. Because that's all the Game Awards is really about at the end of the day, PR. Um, If I had to guess a release date, I'd say June. I think June would make the most sense. But, you know, we'll see. I, it's definitely not going to be a shadow drop. Not a chance in hell. But I could see it in, like, June. Let's see. Other things that could be there. Um, I know we have... There's that Last of Us multiplayer game that, you know, a lot of people were expecting to be at Sony Showcase this year. And then I want to say Jason Schreier came out with a report being like, no, that game's actually a lot messier behind the scenes than, right, they want to admit that, like, the game's... I don't, I don't want to say development hell, but basically they, because Naughty Dog doesn't know how to make multiplayer games, right, they brought in people from Bungie to, like, rework things. But I still think that, you know, and just figuring out, like, can they even release this? I'm going to, there is a good chance that we do either see Last of Us Factions, or we see, um, uh, some sort of, I, I want to say the Last of Us 2 show, like the HBO show, I want to say that's scheduled for like mid-year next year, I want to say it's either been filmed or it's going to start filming soon, so maybe we'll hear something about that. Like, we know they've casted someone as Abby. But, you know, we'll figure out the rest of it. So I would not be surprised if we see something from that either. One of those two things. Maybe both. You know, we could get both. But it's going to definitely be one or... It's definitely going to be at least one of them. Because we already know The Last of Us 2. Or The Last of Us... HBO's The Last of Us is getting a... Uh, is definitely going to win an award. So, right, it winning an award and then, you know, it getting a trailer somewhere else in the night wouldn't surprise me. It'd be really cool if we got a trailer for that Fallout show that's being developed by Amazon. I do like me some Fallout. There, It's got a lot of potential there for, like, world building and whatnot. I, w I would love to see something from that. So, I think it's totally possible we get something from Fallout as well. Um... Let's see, what else did I have written down here? Uh, Metro, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people ask about Metroid Prime 4, because this would be a pretty cool place to show it off. I don't think it's happening. I do think Metroid Prime 4 is next year. 
I do think we're getting Metroid Prime 4 in 2024. However, however, I don't think it's going to be here. Because in the past, you know, Nintendo usually showed off one thing at the Game Awards. Right? Breath of the Wild, Funky Kong, Breath of the Wild's DLC, stuff like that. Bayonetta 3, because that used to be when, you know, Reggie was president of Nintendo of America. But since Reggie stepped down, Nintendo hasn't really done it outside of, like, putting out, like, ads. They haven't done anything at the Game Awards. Because Doug Bowser just isn't as close as Reggie was with uh, Jeff Keighley. So I don't think we're going to get Metroid. It could, you know, maybe it'll happen. Metroid has always been more popular in the West than it has been in Japan. The Game Awards is a good place to show it off. You know, advertise that, hey, guess what? Metroid Dread won a Game Award two years ago. You know, sure. I've drank this water so much faster than I thought I would. You know, it's possible. It's possible we get Metroid Prime 4, but I seriously doubt it. I also doubt anything about the Switch 2, the Switch Pro. No, no, we're not going to get any of that. Obviously. Like, I, I still, I'm still, i still surprised that Xbox showed off the Series X at the Game Awards, what, like four years ago? That still surprises me. Like, that, I remember when that happened at the time. I didn't even really believe it. Because I... Well, one, I didn't watch the Game Awards that year. I think that was, what, 2019? Yeah, I was doing... I was doing other things that night as well. I'm always doing... You you know, the problem with the Game Awards when it happens is usually I'm doing other stuff that night. Right? Like, there's something that happens that night, you know, that I'm usually busy for. Right? It's the first day of something special. So, yeah. Not always, you know, like, I don't think it was last year, but, like, the year before that, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> it usually messes with things. So, yeah, no, no, Zelda, no Metroid, no Switch 2. Honestly, no, I don't think they'll do it. I could see the new X, because there's all these talks about, like, an Xbox Series X Pro, or a Series X Slim, or maybe they call it something else. Because we got the PS5 Slim this year. And so I could see, you know, Xbox um, Series... Because we know there's, like, suppose Part of that big, you know, Bethesda leak from a few months ago involved um, a new Xbox Series X. And it, that one looked like a, um, it was like, and you know how the Xbox Series X is like a fridge? The new one is like a, a cylinder. At least from the con, you know, from the concept art from like a few years back. So, you know, I, I could see that being shown off. Um, what else? GTA 6. I don't know. On what, I could totally see it. You know, Jeff Keighley, you know, it'd be great pull for Jeff Keighley. Because, like, I totally expect Elden Ring DLC to be there. That's, I don't want to say that's guaranteed, but I think that's got, like, a 90% chance of happening. Assuming, you know, they're ready to show it, which I think they are. So, you know, getting GTA would be huge, but I could also just see Rockstar doing their own event. How did we miss them? So, I, I think anything's possible with GTA 6. I don't know. I've heard a lot of things about how, like, Rockstar's kind of getting ready for GTA 6, right? There was this thing about how the Rockstar, like, social club is going to be shut down soon or something like that. Uh, I'm going to miss, achie you know, that... Because I used to watch Achievement Hunters GTA videos all the time. And now that Achievement Hunter's dead, I'm going to miss G GTA 5 Achievement Hunter. Not like I, I like I stopped watching at some point. At some point I was like, you know what? I think I'm done with GTA 5. And then, you know, instead of just sticking around and leaving annoying comments, I just stopped watching. 
Because guess what? That's something you can do instead of, you know, bitching and moaning about, like, oh, they don't make GTA V like they used to. Like, fuck off with that, you fucking entitled cunts. Um. But no, I'm gonna. I, I didn't even think about that until just now. Um. Uh, not. Uh, so there was a whole, there's a bunch of reports this week about Knights of the Old Republic, and how no, that game is still, you know, in development, they're still working, because there's all of these things that it might be cancelled, no, it's not cancelled, but, I don't know, it's definitely, that one, I can guarantee you is in development hell. Same thing with the Prince of Persia game, right, we know about the Prince of Persia, Sands of Time remake, they're getting a new Prince of Persia game out, that comes out in like, January or February, before we're getting a, um, you know, before we're getting a, the remake, which was announced like two years earlier. Just shows you how bad things were going there. So, yeah, anything else? Um... I don't know, it was a Thanksgiving break. There wasn't really shit going on. Um, Jet Force Gemini is on Switch Online. That's a game I've heard about but never played. So, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, so it looks like that's all I've got for news. So what have I been doing? Uh, we'll talk about Wish and Invincible a little bit later. Uh, what else have I been doing? Have I been reading any Dreadnought or Sovereign, the second book? Uh, no, question mark? I might have read like a chapter or two. Yeah, no, I read like a chapter in the past week. Because they, I think where we left off... Right, Dreadnought was in, right, had been captured by the villain Sovereign. And they had, and like Calamity, Doc, and Kinetic, is that their name? Kinetic? Had busted them out. And then in the next few chapters, um, F Dreadnought and basically has finally started dating Calamity. Right, because Dreadnought doesn't want Calamity to see them at their lowest. So she asks her to leave. And then afterwards, they end up talking. She talks with somebody. I don't, was it... Was it the wizard? She talks with somebody and makes the realization like, Oh no, Calamity's in love with me. Like, because she's thought her whole relationship was like one-sided up until that point. But no, she finally realizes that no, Calamity like loves me. So she runs over there, gets yelled at by Calamity's mom for flying... And then we see one of her have uh, her night terrors and how, like, this night they were, like, especially bad. And then, yeah, I, th I think that's... And then they run back to Doc, and Doc's just like, fucking finally. And I think that's where the chapter ended, or, you know, maybe they talked a little bit more after that, but that was around where the chapter ended. So yeah, you know it's. I do, I do need to finish it, but I'll 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 finish it later. Um, what else? What else have I been doing? So I've been playing Pokemon. Um, so right, we we did a let's play of Scarlet, but my so I bought Scarlet, and my one of my roommates bought Violet. Well, I was like, you know, I kind of want to play some Pokemon. All right, I kind of want to play Pokemon either. And I, I don't know why. I could have just played one of the older games. But I was like, you know, let's play Scarlet and Violet. So instead of, you know, restarting Scarlet, I just borrowed my roommate's copy of Violet. So I've been playing through Violet. At this, I haven't put much time into it, but I've done... 
I did the sequence. There's a, so if you've never seen, there's like a sequence break in the game, where before going to Mesagoza, you can like throw a Pokemon at like over a ledge and battle something on the other side, and it'll teleport you across. So that way you can get out of the starting area around Los Platos, and you know go anywhere else on the map. Of course, you know you won't have Maridon or Coridon. You're kind of you know a little bit limited by what you can do. But it is something you can do. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's sequence break. So, you know, I sequence broke. Caught a bunch of Pokemon that are way higher level that won't obey me. But I'm glad you can... Because that was... I did not like that. In, one of my few problems with Legends Arceus is that you can't catch Pokemon that are higher level. Right? You can only catch stuff that's, you know, on your level or lower. Uh, you know, there's some sort of restriction there. But no, in Scarlet and Violet, oh, you want to catch something that's level 60? Go right, it'll fuck you up, but go right ahead. So that's how I have a, um, and you know, I eventually went to Mesa Goza, did the whole, uh, got, got Maridon. I think it's Maridon. And so, and you know, I've done two of the Titan Pokemon. I've done the Cloth and I've done the Bird. You know, just to make things go easier. So yeah, I've done that. Uh, well, I went and got a, um, oh, uh, what's, Frigibax? The Godzilla Pokemon, you know, the baby Godzilla Pokemon. So I've got one of those. Um, and it's like, it's like 20 levels stronger than my next strongest thing. So like that, <laughs> that's gonna, it does not listen to me at all, but I have it. But yeah, so I've done two of the Titans. I've done Cloth, and I've done the Bomber Bird, whose name I don't remember. Then I've done two of the gym, two, two of the gyms. I've done the Grass Gym, and I've done the Bug Gym. Yeah, no, that sounds right. And then I've only done the uh, Dark Starfall. I kept, I could not remember uh, Team Star's name. And I kept calling it, um, them Team Flare. Because I just could not remember that they were called Team Star. Because <laughs> I've not been playing it alone, I should say. I've been playing Pokemon with two other people, right? So, you know, we're joining, we're squatting up together, and, you know, we're going along. I was, they, and I want to say the two other people I'm playing with have never played a Pokemon game before. So this is their first ever Pokemon game. And, yeah, they're, you know, they're, technically they're not as far as me. But, you know, we've been kind of just going along. Because I have all the experience, and, you know, I've been, you know, helping them out along the way. They, one of them really struggled with the, um, Titan, the bird one. Because, in my opinion, the easiest way to go in that game... Is because I know at the start of the game, um, they tell you like, "Hey, you can either go with Nimona and go to the Bug Gym, or you can go with Arvin and go to Cloth." I high if you've never played it, listen to Nimona. Nimona's stuff is way easier. Specific, I I don't think the Titan is easier, but the Bug Gym and the Dark Starfall, Starfall base are much easier. Then the grass, depending on the starter as well. Then the grass gym and the, um, claw. Uh, then the, and the Melia. Meli? Melia? The fire starfall. The fire starfall is way harder than, right? Like, I recommend doing the dark one first. The dark one's way easier. Um, for starter, I picked Fue Coco. But then I learned all of us picked Fue Coco. So, you know, and, like, we're playing with a group of people. But instead of each of us picking it right, like one of the different starters, so that way we can have all three, we each pick Fue Coco, which is very funny. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because one, and. So, yeah, we each picked Fue Coco. I honestly, most, most of their other Pokemon I don't really know about. I know they have Fuecoco. I know one of them has a Mudsbray. 
because it kept kicking his ass. Um, another person has... Uh, I know they had a hop up. What else did they have? They had... We've done a few terror raids together, you know, stuff like that. They had a rock... We, had, we found a rock um, fungus. We found a graveyard. A few other things. Graveyard? I think it's graveyard. Whatever the first evolution of the ghost dog is. A few other things. Oh, they have a um, Mabostiff. Yeah, it's Mabostiff, right? The first evolution of the dog. And um, it's... I'm like, oh my god, this dog is so ugly. She's like, oh, the dog, look at this little puppy. Isn't it so cute? So, yeah, that's that's been going. But, you know, they, they did it. They, they were struggling on the bird. But they eventually did do it. They beat the bird. But, yeah, you know, we've just been trucking along. I, cur my team currently, I have a... I'm using Pomo, Pomo, the middle. I have the middle stage. And I've been using a the small live, which I also have the middle stage. Doll live, I think, is the middle stage. But I don't know if I'm going to keep either of them. Like, I have them on my team, but I'm not really, like, invested in them at the moment. But they have proven useful. Um, I have Fue Coco, which is in its middle stage, whose name I don't remember. I have a Flamingo, which I've heard the Flamingo is actually really good. I just don't know what to do with it. I've got a Mouse Hold that I named um, Mouseaholic. Because y y if you've ever seen the Mouse Hold memes, um, those are really, f I think those are really funny. So I was like, oh, which one do I want to go with? Eh, let's go with Mouseaholic. Right, like Alcoholic. Uh, the Divorce one's also, pr there, there's a lot of good ones. I think of the divorce one, though. Or where one of the children is dead. <laughs> There's a lot of good mousehold memes. Because I know mousehold's OP. Right? If you get it strong... At least, it, you know, in like a casual playthrough. I'm sure it'll be OP. Because, like, I know we... For, you know, the Let's Play, we used, um... Finizen and Palafin. And I'm like, I don't want to use that one. I know that one's OP. And, you know, it's nice to have... But I don't want to use that one again. I want to, you know, f let's find something else. And then, like I said, I have Frigibax, or... It's whatever, it's at whatever the second stage is, Arctobac. Because I caught it, and then literally it evolved, like, the next level. Like, when I leveled it up once. Um... And then, I think that's all six? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what else I want to use on my team. You know... And then there's, like, a lot of stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, you know, this thing is good. Or, like, I'd love to use, um... Iron Blade... Uh, wh whatever the Gardevoir Delayed one is. I would love to use that, but you only get that in the post-game. Or at the very... Not even the post-game. At the very end of the game. So it's like, what's... You know, I gotta fill it slot with something at the moment. So, yeah. That one... Even though that one's... I think that one's cool. It's definitely off the radar for me at the moment. So yeah, uh, it's you know it's been fun though. That fuck has been pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, no, they've been. You know, they've been getting kind of addicted to it. You know, realizing the joy of Pokemon. And because they've never played any of the previous games, all the bitching and moaning that most people do, nope, they don't have to worry about that because they don't have any point of reference to compare it to. And Pokemon is more accessible now than ever. So, like, I, I gave them a copy of the type chart just to, like, hey, here's something you can have. But I was like, you know, not only do I... Not only do you not have to memorize it, I encourage you not to memorize it. And then, you know, I haven't... I, I kind of explained the physical special split to them. Like, hey, these are physical, these are special. Not really. I haven't explained abilities. I haven't explained natures. Because you can get through Pokemon without knowing natures. Abilities, I probably will at some point. But you don't need to know nature as in a casual playthrough. 
There's a few other things, I'm sure. I had to explain hold, held items to them. But I doubt they'll use it outside of, you know, the one or two things you get. But yeah. Um, other things... Oh, I have I been playing anything else? I still have not played Spectre of Torment. I keep saying I'm going to. I haven't. Um, I picked on... So all the Black... So Black Friday is today. Um, the one thing I did pick up, and I picked it up earlier this week at Walmart, was, um, Street Fighter VI. Right? I had been waiting for Street Fighter VI to go on sale for, like, 30 bucks. And I kept seeing it on sale for, like, 40 bucks. And I was like, no, I'm going to wait until it hits 30. And then finally, on, like, Tuesday, it hit, um... It hit 30. And I was like, yep, that's good enough for me. I'm going to buy Street Fighter 6. So I own that. I have not played... I own it on the PS5 because I keep seeing it go on sale on Xbox. And I know I have an Xbox. But I don't care. Like, I'm like, you know, I don't... Like, I bought this Xbox for Starfield. I don't really... Plan you know, outside of that and some Game Pass stuff, I most of the stuff I'd rather play on PlayStation... Xbox may be the better console technically, like the more powerful one, but no, I like the PlayStation more. What can I say? Fucking sue me. <laughs> um, that was not an invite to challenge. That was rhetorical. Um, so yeah, I have a copy of Street Fighter VI, have not even touched it. It literally just came in, like, in the mail today. So I haven't touched that. Um, I've been buying a bunch of stuff on sale. Like, I, I have had so many packages come in this week of just, like, random things. Like, oh, here's some books. Here's some, um... Um, the Ticket to Ride Legacy. Right? Because they released a new Ticket to Ride that's, like, Legacy of the West. That fine... After, like, a month of waiting finally came in today or not today but over the weekend or over the past week so it's like oh now i'm gonna have to find time to play like i can barely find time to play one game of ticket to ride now i gotta find a group to play 12 like holy shit that's gonna that's gonna be a pain in the ass Um, but, you know, I'll figure it out. I don't know, my group has been wanting to play, um, oh, the quest, is it the, the quest for Planet Nine? Oh, fuck, what's that game called? Um, not two, um, the, whatever, the trick-taking game, quest for Planet Nine. I don't know what it's called. My group was like, oh, yeah, you know, we should get, you know, over, like, Thanksgiving. And I also kind of want to get and play some more Isaac, the Binding of Isaac card game. Uh, that was the one I was like, hey, anyone interested in that? Because I'd love to do some of that. So, yeah. Because I have, you know, we, I was so hyped for the Binding of Isaac one. And I have played frighteningly little of it. Oh, they lost someone. Probably at the very end there. Man, what else? What else have I had? It's been a bunch of stupid shit. Like, um, I can't even think. I've just had a bunch of like small packages come in.
Um, so yeah, um, have I any, um, so I've been watching Secret Life, and I don't want to spoil it, because, so I've seen up to the current episode, um, I've been watching from Mumbo's, I think we talked about this previously, I've been watching Mumbo's Perspective, because I was like, yeah, you know, let's do Mumbo, because usually, usually how I, I don't, I don't have the time to watch everybody, so usually I just pick somebody, and I'm like, okay, let's watch from, you know, this person's perspective. Usually Grian, but I, you know, I've done Pearl, I've done Smajor, um, I think I did Scar for one of the seasons. But for this season, I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do Mumbo. Because, you know, I like Mumbo. And that's been very interesting, you know. I don't want to, I don't want to give away what happened in today's episode, because it was wild. But the episode, the thumbnail on it is him on a Strider, and it's um, titled Idiot, right? It just has an arrow pointing at him, named Idiot. And yeah, that kind of sums it up. But it was, it was a wild episode. It was a wild episode. Good episode, you know, I was thoroughly enthralled. And by the end, I was like, oh shit, right? I just want more. So I did actually, I went and watched... Um, Gemini Tay, who I don't know if Gemini Tay goes by Gemini or like Gem, or if they go by Tay, because I know someone else goes by Tay, but I want to say that's Tater Tot who goes by Tay, who's I think a different person, so I want to say they go by Gem, but I'm not entirely, because I've literally never watched a single one of their videos, but I was like, yeah, you know, let's go to this perspective, sure, you know, I'm curious, and that was, you know, that was fun. And then actually seeing it from, like, the big thing from somebody else's perspective was wild. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, because you don't even realize. So that was, that was cool. And yeah, it was a, it was a good episode. You know, I'm excited. I don't know how many episodes are left. I can't think there's going to be that many. But I don't honestly know. Because I, I, some things happen. And, yeah, it, it, honestly, I can't wait for the super cut. Where someone takes everybody's perspective from the end of episode 6 and just mashes them all together. Kind of like, um... Actually, yeah, that would spoil things. But, right, people, I've seen that done before. Where someone, like, took, like, oh, this is when someone did this trap and this was everyone else's perspective on the trap. Right? I want to see something like that. For this scene, because this scene, the, the the ending of this episode was wild, and it's gonna. I'm really curious what happened to everybody. There's also one other person who I'm like, wait, what happened to you? Because I have no idea. Like in the middle of uh, Jim's episode, there was an explosion that wasn't in Mumbo's, and I'm like, what was that explosion? Right, what happened there? Because I know Mumbo was working with a TNT cannon, but I don't think it was his TNT cannon because it sounded a lot closer and, like, Jim and Mumbo are not on opposite sides of the map, but they're, you know, somewhat far away. You know, they're, they're like, Jim and, Jim and the others are on, like, the corner and Mumbo's near the middle. So I don't think, I wouldn't think they would be able to hear his TNT cannon, but it's possible. And I gotta see Grian's perspective on that as well. Because, like, there's clearly, like, a setup there. Like, I knew they were doing something, but to actually, like, see where it ends. It's like, okay, I kind of want to see the setup now. So, yeah. Alright, so let's talk about Wish. So, I saw the new... So, on Thanksgiving... I was like, okay, boom, I've eaten the turkey, I've eaten the stuffing, I've eaten the f shit that nobody likes. You know, there's some other shit there that... Ugh. Um, But it was like, okay, you know, I've had that, I've had dessert, let's go, let's go to a movie. So I went and saw Wish. You know, because sometimes you just need to get away. Um, And Wish... Can I, uh, well, can I be honest, I don't really care for turkey. Um... 
in recent years, my father's been smoking a turkey. And I think that's better than, like, an oven-baked turkey. But I still don't really like turkey. But yeah, smoked turkey. I've never had a deep-fried turkey. I don't want a deep-fried turkey. But smoked turkey is definitely better than, like, oven-baked. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much if you've never had it. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't care for turkey. I'm not really a bird guy, I guess. You know, like, even chicken. I'm like, you know, there are some things that chicken's great in. I love me a good chicken parm. But there are other times... Chicken piccata is also pretty good. But there are other times where I'm just like, nah, I don't want chicken, man. I don't know, I feel like just because everything is chicken, chicken gets overdone so easily. Whatever. So, Wish. Let's talk about Wish. So, just off the bat, I think this movie is kind of meh. Like, it's... Is it the worst Disney movie I've ever seen? No, I've seen Chicken Little. I've seen fucking Home on the Range. I've seen other examples I can't think of off the top of my head. There are worse Disney movies than this. But there are also a lot better Disney movies than this. Like, this was their big 100-year anniversary movie. And it just... Doesn't. It just doesn't live up to that. Like, there's there was clearly an effort. There was clearly, like, Disney... The people who did this, they wanted to do something big for Disney's 100th anniversary. There's clearly that idea there... It's just in actual ex execution. The movie's a lot shakier than that. Because, you know, they, there's a lot of things that, like, people have been wanting a good Disney villain for a while now. So the movie gives us a good, or, you know, tries to give us, like, a good classic Disney villain with Chris Pine. And I feel like acting-wise, he does okay, but then you get to the music. So I guess let's start, let's start with the music. You know, I know it's... It's the thing I've heard everyone talking about recently. So the big thing with this movie has been the music, right? Because there was they released the villain song. Um, is this the things I get? And it's it's just not good, right? There's been hundreds of videos dissecting it, right? Saying that oh no, the problem is this. The, the main problem I remember people talking a lot about was that the problem is the melody, that the lyrics are fine. The problem is that it's a pop song. When it instead should be something, you know, more sinister, more operatic. And, like, I've seen people redo the song with, like, you know, a different melody, and it just works better. But I still think, I just think it's an inherently flawed song. Because we have, it's been a long time since the last good Disney villain song. What, Mother Knows Best in Rep uh, Tangled? Which, even then, wasn't that great. I'm, I, I do not care for Mother Knows Best. I like, um... Friends on the other side from Princess and the Frog way more. I just like Princess and the Frog way more than I do Tangled. <clears throat> um, so there was that. Most and honestly, most of the songs are kind are not good. Like it, the movie's kind of all over the place when it comes to music, because you'll have one song right, which is like more poppy. Like this is a pop song, and then the next song will be a ballad. And then the next song will be, like, a musical number. Like, there's one... Like, you know how in musicals, when they end the song, they leave, like, a pause for the audience to clap? That's kind of what Wish... There's one song in Wish that does that. Where it ends, and then it leaves, like, a pause for the audience to clap. And it's just like, well, this is very... Like, if this went on a live show, sure... But this is a fucking movie theater that there were oh that there were only six of us in. Remember, I, I mentioned last week in the strike list that movies nowadays seem to be all or nothing. Either it's completely filled or nobody's fucking there. And I know I went on Thanksgiving, but I went like later in the day on Thanksgiving, and still, it was literally up until the movie started. I thought we were the only ones in there. 
And then as it ended, I looked behind us and there was like a there was like a family of four. In the very back. So yeah, there was we I you know, I would not have been surprised if we were the only ones there. So yeah, it's it's the music's all over the place. The only good song is the one they've been using in the trailers, you know, the I look up at a star to guide me, um, make this wish come true. You know, it's the one they've been using in all the trailers. That's the one good song. And so, of course, they play it like three times. Other than that, I don't really care for the music. The one song, you know, I thought it was a good song. I do like it. But the rest of it... Nah. Nah, the rest of it doesn't really work. Um, and I will say the one who... Um, the actress who plays Asha... I do think does a does a she does a good job. Um, she's a good singer, so you know she pulls off that song well for the most part. Um, there's one moment where I'm like, that kind of reminds me of like something I saw like that something out of like Frozen, where you just have this like one really awkward musical moment that I'm not entirely sure works. I mean, it was okay, but you know, uh, oh, that was wearing the big man gear. But no, other than that, I'm like. You know, whatever. It's a Disney movie. It's 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 I no. I'm gonna say it's a modern Disney movie, right? It's a modern Disney movie. So it was kind of a you know it's kind of a mess. <laughs> I don't know. Did so. Osh, I think whoever does Asha does a good job. Um, Chris Pine does okay. Um, whoever is playing the king's wife, I thought does a good job. Whoever's playing um, her friends, Asha's friends, who are literally just the seven dwarves. Like, that's literally, they're just the seven dwarves. Because, again, Disney's 100th anniversary. They're paying tribute to their first. Um, I think they do okay, but there's not that much of, like, they kind of feel, like, forced into the plot. And not like a... Like, I talked about the Marvels a few weeks ago, or last week, I guess, where, like, the family was kind of forced into the plot, but I didn't really care in the Marvels, because I like the family. The friends, on the other hand, in this movie, like, yeah, they were forced into the plot, but I don't like them as much. And they very... You know, they're the Seven Dwarves, so that's their entire personalities. So I just didn't really care about them. Well, outside of, I guess, the one who is Doc, right? The main one. The rest of them, eh, who cares? The little star is cute, you know? It's it's a Luma. It's basically just a poor man's Luma. And yeah, it's cute, but it doesn't really do much outside of that. I, I, I think Lumas are cuter, but they're literally just ripping it. Um, what else? What else do I have things with? Problems, questions? Um, well, I guess the other big thing I've seen people talking about is the art style. Because, you know, we're in a post-Spider-Verse, post-Puss in Boots world, where, you know, movies are now starting to... Wow, that turned around on us fast. We were ahead when I died. Um, so, right, we're in a post-Spider-Verse world, and companies are now, you know, feeling more open to experiment with their animation. That, right, it's kind of gotten to the point... I'm not going to say it's gotten to the point where we can make animation that looks as realistic as humans. I mean, we can do that almost, you know, like, video games look very good nowadays. But we kind of don't... Like, when it comes to, like, stylized animation, there's not many more frontiers to go through. Like, I kind of feel like since... Especially with, like, Pixar. Pixar has just kind of been on a holding pattern these last five years... Like, yeah, they've made some good-looking movies, but, you know, you can't really take it that much farther. There's only so long you can spend rendering Mr. Incredible's left butt cheek, you know? So now that, you know, we've kind of reached the upper limit, people now feel free to get more creative with their animation styles, which is where we get stuff like Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots. And those are both great movies. Oh, my, I would recommend Puss in Boots The Last Wish. A thousand times over this one. Easily. E that movie's a thousand times better than this one. 
Again, not that I hate it. I just don't love it. So this movie, you know, if they were trying to do something more... Wish is Disney's middle ground. You know, where they're trying to do something more creative with the animation. But they don't want to, like, fully commit yet. Or maybe they didn't have the time to fully commit. Because it sounds like this movie was in development hell. Like most Disney stuff nowadays. So, instead, we get this kind of, like, half-baked attempt. And, honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. Because there are some shots in this movie that look beautiful. That look like paintings, right? Like, there's one specific shot where I'm like, Oh my god, that looks fantastic. It looks like a painting, man. Like, I could see myself hanging that up on the wall. Like, it looks great. And then there are other shots, especially, like, on the characters... Where it's like, no, this does not look good. Where, like... Because the characters just kind of look unfinished at times. Like, they look un... I don't want to say unrendered. But there's, like, an entire round of, like, shading or detailing that needed to happen. That just didn't. So, yeah, I would say they look... It, other shots look unfinished. It really just depends on what it's going for. But I didn't hate it. I just... There are just other... You know, this is Disney's... Even though Disney, you know, the forefront of animation, one of the big studios, I, I guess, supposedly, this, they originally wanted this movie to be hand-drawn, but Disney just doesn't have the production staff and the equipment to do a hand-drawn movie anymore, which does kind of suck. Because hand-drawn hand animation is great. And I, and I bet this movie would have looked better if it was hand-drawn. Right? That probably would have been amazing if it had been hand-drawn. Because, like, most cartoons nowadays, including Disney ones, outsource to, like, Korean animation studios. Because, yeah, there's, no, there's very little in-house infrastructure to do animation nowadays. <sighs> so... And you know, you can't just get James Baxter to do everything. <laughs> I joke, I joke. Ugh. So yeah, I was... I, I, I don't know, I come away from the movie being like, no, it's not terrible. But it's also flawed. It's kind of... Like, what I... And, like, I'd still probably recommend it over, like, Trolls 3. Which, to be fair, I haven't seen. But there's no way Trolls 3 is better than this. Like, I don't know I don't know anything about Trolls 3. But there's no way Trolls 3 is better than this. Because I do not have high... Even though I thought Trolls 2 was okay. You know, I enjoyed Trolls 2 for what it was as a very sloppy, but not as sloppy as other movies, race allegory... You know, like, there's more... There's more of an... Uh, the idea of Trolls 3 using music as a metaphor for races is, I still think, better than Zootopia using carnivores and horrivores as a metaphor for race. Like, that's way sloppier a metaphor. At least in my opinion. Um... So, yeah. Um... Who knows, knows about Wish? I don't know. I I don't know the per. So I went and saw it with somebody, and they said that like they thought it would be good as like a Broadway music. That give it a few rewrites, because you know there's that one song that ends like a Broadway song, but maybe as like a whole it might work better as like a Broadway musical, like the way the sets are set up, the way some of the characters act. Especially the opening song, which reminds me a lot of the opening song of Encanto. Like, it might work better as, like, a Broadway thing. And I don't think this... Like, I know Disney's been big on the Broadway. I've seen both Aladdin and Lion King. And those are great. You know, those are a lot of fun. But, like, out of all the things to get a Broadway treatment, I don't think it's going to be this one. Because I, I know they're definitely going to push, like, Frozen or Encanto before they do this. Does does this movie feel like it was made like by an AI that like all the music was AI generated? I wouldn't go that far. 
Does it feel like someone trying to be like Lin-Manuel Miranda? At points, yes. There was one song in particular that really felt like discount, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda, like, you know, the Dominican Republic. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote this. So, yeah. Like, I know everyone talks about the villain song, but there's one other song in this movie that I think is way worse when it comes to that. Alan Tudyk did a fine job, I guess, but he's unnecessary. But I like Alan Tudyk, you know. He may annoy me, but that's kind of the point. So yeah, that's Wish. Uh, the last thing we got is Invincible. So I have not... So I know a new episode came out today, episode 4. Which is the final episode of 2023. Because they're taking, you know, a quick break. And they'll be back next year. Which I saw someone mad about. Nah, that's fine. Um, well, depending on where they end it. <laughs> but no, I so I've been watching Invincible Season 2. Um, there's some interesting changes, you know. So I have... Re I'll give this... Warrant, I'll give this... Precursor? Pre... I'll just say I've read the comics. Yep. I ye Years ago, I was recommended the comics... I picked them up, read the first, like, 75, didn't read them for a while, and then when season one of the show came back, I finally went and finished them. So I've read all 100 and... I want to say it's like 140 issues, but I, it might be less than that. But I have read them all. It's a good comic, easy recommendation, and the show's really good. And I've heard some people say, like, oh, season two isn't as good. And, I mean, yes, but also at the same time, we're clearly setting up for some bigger things. And at the end of episode three, you definitely see that. So, yeah, no, I, I have been enjoying it, you know. Um, much to my... So, so, a few things, um, right, they're, you know, they're mostly sticking with the comics. I am, so, like, the whole, in episode two, they go to Atlantis, Mark goes to Atlantis, and, right, Cecil's like, oh, you're gonna have to marry the queen of Atlantis, and then he ends up having to fight this monster. In the comics, that happens in, like, ish, because I, I think I even mentioned when the show, back in season one, in an episode of this show, that I was surprised they didn't do the Atlantis thing as, like, a throwaway joke. Because that happens in, like, the first, like, maybe eight to ten issues of the comics. Like, that happens very early on in the comics. Because where the comics left off in season one, they left off around, like, tw I think the farthest thing they had gotten to was, like, issue 25. So, from there, it's like, okay. So, they went back and they did the Atlantis thing. Which, honestly, they didn't have to. Because it... Spoiler alert, it never... At least in the comic, I don't ever remember it actually coming back. But they did... So they do that. But in the comics, he actually has to, like, marry... Right? The whole thing about him marrying the queen? That is actually how it works in the comic. But he's able to get out of the marriage because, like, one of the queen's, like, royal guards has a crush on the queen... So he, like, makes a deal with this guy and, like, he throws a fight or something like that. And that's how he's able to get out of it. Whereas in this one, he fights a big monster and he's just able to beat it up and save the queen's life. So, you know, things play out a little differently. Um, other things... The whole Darkwing thing is, you know, mostly similar. I want to say in the comics, though, Darkwing, uh... rapes someone. Which I know they're intentionally going to leave out. And, you know, they're probably going to leave out stuff like that. There's some other things that happen later where it's like, I would be amazed. Because, you know, in some ways, like, the comic is like, okay, you know, I give them credit for, like, tackling this issue. But, like, did they do the best job at tackling this issue? So I could see the show just making the executive decision to be like, you know what? They're either going to do two things. They're either, one, just not going to do it at all. Or two, they're just going to do it, you know, they're actually going to do it right this time. Like, I think of, um, the Scott Pilgrim. Oh, fuck, I didn't have Scott Pilgrim on here. Oh, shit, I forgot to put that on here, because I have finished that. 
Oh shit, I'm gonna... Okay, we'll talk about that next. I think about Scott Pilgrim, where it looked at the original source material and was like, okay, what if we went back and we fixed all the problems in this? I can kind of see The Invincible Show is kind of doing the same thing of like, hey, let's go back and fix some of these problems. I wonder how far they're going to go with some of this. You know, like, are they going to go all the way? Are they just not going to talk about some of these things? So it's going to be curious to see where that goes. But no, um, I knew I predicted this um, last time. So for season two, I knew the start of the season two was going to be Ar Ar Armstrong Levy. I swear it was Levi, but I guess it's I want to say they pronounced it in the show Levy. Armstrong Levy. I think when season one wrapped up, that was my prediction to how season two was going to start. And I actually, where I thought season two was going to potentially end, is actually where season, where episode three ends. Well, it's probably what happens in episode, what happens in episode four, which I have not seen yet, is, is where I predicted the season was going to end. Again, being as vague as possible here. So instead, I, I know there, there are a few things they're setting up. Like, you know, sh um, you have that one Martian who has become the Shapesmith. So they're obviously leading up to the invasion of Mars. But no, I actually have a pretty good idea of where Season 2 is going to end now. You know, now, now that I see the pace they're going at, no, I've got a pretty good idea... Because, you know, uh, I guess let's just, with the Armstrong Levi stuff, you know, I know, you know, there was just a South Park episode a few weeks ago about how people are sick of the multiverse. I bet this is going to be Invincible's multiverse, right? With Armstrong Levy being able to, you know, navigate the multiverse. I bet that's going to be a major thing at some point. So, yeah, I that's that's kind of my prediction with, where the season ends. Of course, we won't know until next year, but I think it makes sense. And, and Invincible has a pretty cool multiverse. There's some good episodes in there. I wonder how far they're going to go with it. But no, there are some good multiverse episodes. I don't. I just don't remember when that happens in the comics. I don't. I want to say that's around issue sixty. Like I know that's after the invasion of Mars. But, like, I know there's a lot of other shit that needs to happen before then. And after that. Like, I guess uh, Robert Kirkman did an interview and talked about how, like, the, the, the hiatus between season one and two is the longest hiatus he wants to have for the show. That from here on out, he, or he eventually wants to get to the point where we're getting a new season every year. And how many years is it going to take to do the entire story... If I had to get... If he's trying to get a season a year, I'm going to guess six seasons. I don't... You know, maybe, maybe seven, but I'm going to guess six seasons. I think, you know, the perfect way to do it, six seasons in a movie. Give us six seasons of Invincible, the animated show. And then give us a movie where he teams up with Spider-Man. Because we know Amazon has the... Is doing, like, the Silk show. They're doing, like, a Spider-Man noir show. So give us an Invincible and Spider-Man movie. Six seasons in a movie. That'd be perfect. Just a thought. Just a thought. So let's talk about Scott Pilgrim. Um, I really enjoyed this. So Scott Pilgrim, where we had last talked about it, I had seen the first three episodes. We talked about this last week in the strike list. Since then, I have finished it, and it was fantastic. Honestly, a complete... So, in the first episode, for the first, like, 20 minutes, it's like, oh, this is basically one for one, right? They're adapting the... They're, they're adapting the comic, but they're also, you know, adapting the movie. Because the, for the first, like, the beginning of the movie is also very faithful to the comics. So, it's like, okay, you know, you're playing it faith, you're playing it, you're playing it safe, you're playing it faithful. And then after... But at the end of the first episode, Scott loses. And it's like, holy shit. And yeah, the rest of the show just goes in a completely different direction. It's I've seen some people say that after watching the show, it's clear Brian O'Malley has been to therapy since then. 
or at least he's let his characters go to therapy. And, yeah, no, that's kind of... Because, you know, Scott Pilgrim is about a shitty guy who hooks up with a shitty girl and deals with his seven... Or her seven evil exes, right? It's about a guy not being able to deal with a woman's baggage. But also dealing with his own baggage. But also Scott Pilgrim is an asshole. And he's also kind of a passive observer in his life. And he's also a pedophile, or whatever the technical term is. Because he's dating a 17-year-old. So the show is just like, you know what? Fuck all of that. We're just going to clean all of that up. Like, the only thing they... I mean, technically all of that's still there. Because all that still kind of happened. But it's just like, no, we're going to go in a... You know, all the bullshit... Uh, all the bullshit that, you know, I enjoyed in the comics... But now I can look back on, now that I'm older, especially now that I feel like I'm older, now that I am older than Scott, not feel like, now that I am older than Scott, you know, I look back at the Scott Pilgrim comic and view it very differently. Right? Because the, from the first time I watched the movie, to actually sitting down and reading the comic, to watching the show, or, you know, to doing all that. It now, it reads very differently. You can see, I see a lot more of the flaws with Scott in Ramona then you know you do the first time but no this show it just it just plays out completely differently I kind of there's part of me that doesn't even want to spoil it that just says go watch it like even if you just watch the movie like sometime in the past like what like 13 years and you were like yeah yeah that was okay I'd, I'd recommend it it's really good and yeah it's basically so and I would, because part of me was thinking, based on last week, when I had seen the first three episodes, I was like, oh, is this going to be like a reversal? Where Because the original show, or the original was right, Scott fighting S Ramona's seven evil exes. And I was like, oh, is the show going to do like the opposite? Where it's Ramona having to deal with Scott's exes? You know, Kim, Envy, Lisa, Lisa question mark, who's barely in it, and of course Nines. Because that's because the comic kind of does that in a way, where like along Scott's journey to you know defeat the seven evil exes, he also has to deal with his own exes. Right? There's of course Knives, who he was in a very problematic relationship with. There was Kim, who you know he dated, and then he eventually moved away, and they've always kind of been on, you know, like they're definitely not going to hook up again, but they're in like a weird scenario. Um, there's Envy, who, you know, was a really messy breakup, and again, part of that whole thing about, oh, Scott says he never drinks, but yet that's the drunkest he, because he doesn't even remember the night, because of how drunk he was, because he's basically a passive observer in his own life sometimes. And then there's Lisa, the girl who, the one that got away, you know, the one he never dated, but, you know, really kind of wanted to, but also didn't. You know, they have a complicated history. And she's not in this show either. Much to my surprise. I mean, like, it doesn't... For the story they told, it makes sense that she's not here. But, yeah, no, it's a very diff... It's, it's just a very different telling of the story. Instead of, you know, fighting... I mean, Ramona has to fight the evil exes herself. She tried to figure... Because she realizes early on that Scott wasn't killed. He was kidnapped. But it plays out completely differently. It makes the exes, the evil exes, into just exes, right? They're people, right? You know, there, there's that thing about, like, w that's like, oh, everyone is the main character of their own story. And there's that one Reddit post that I love where it's like, when were you the villain in somebody else's story? And it's just about this guy who's just slightly better than this other guy. Like, oh, we were both into computers, but I was just a slightly better coder. We both ran a marathon, and I came in, like, I came in, like, 30th, and he came in 31st, so he fucking, you know, he fucking hated me, because I was just slightly better than him, right? And the show kind of takes it as, like, yeah, Ramona's evil exes are the main character, they're not evil, ex you know, you know Six? Six the musical, where it takes the six wives of Henry VIII, and is like, hey, you know, we're done telling his story. We're going to make... We're going to explain these as, like, people. Right? We're going to give them their own story. 
and right that hey these these six women are more than just a footnote in Henry VIII's story right they have their own lives their own trials their own tribulations they were people Scott Scott Pilgrim takes off is the six of Scott Pilgrim right it's gonna it goes through the evil axis and is like no these are people with lives dreams desires hopes they can change they can evolve and it makes them into people and it's fantastic for that it does good by all i would say it does good by all the characters but kind of like how you know how in the movie the twins just kind of show up for that one battle and then disappear you know they show up for the one music battle and then that's it yeah no the show kind of treats them the same way they sh they show up near the end and are just like hey you know the robot says you're cool so we're just kind of kind of go roll, roll with it and there's so much i'm not even talking about like i'm not covering here because again i kind of completely forgot we were talking about this tonight and you know it's not like i prepare anything for any of this shit anyways but no i shit. i was i really enjoyed scott pilgrim i was thoroughly impressed i think it is a fantastic redo you know if it wasn't for some of the things that were already in scott pilgrim i could totally see some like dude bros being like oh my god scott pilgrim has gone woke the these sjw's have ruined scott pilgrim like if if it wasn't for scott pilgrim already dealing dealing with like bisexuals and like you know a woman with seven x's right and already some you know lgbtq topics that you know it doesn't always handle perfectly at least yeah you know i'm just gonna go with that it doesn't always handle perfectly the show is definitely a lot better at it but you know i i could totally see the show being like oh this ruins scott pilgrim because it's um right because the libs ruin scott pilgrim because there are definitely some changes that they make in the show that i think are for the better but it's the type that those people bitch and moan about. You know, the Yahtzees. Ah, let's just call them what they are, Nazis. How? But no, I, I highly recommend it. It's... It's great, and I, I, cause, and I mean, I already enjoyed the source material, so I'm a little biased. I do at some point need to read some of Brian O'Malley's other stuff. Like I've read Snot Girl, or at least part of Snot Girl. You know, it's funny. Somebody recommended Snot. Okay, this is a weird story. Somebody recommended Snot Girl to me, but didn't tell me that it was the person, the guy who did Scott Pilgrim. And then when I picked it up, like the first few issues. I want to say I picked up, like, the first four. I didn't realize it was the same person who did Scott Pilgrim. Because, like, the copies I had didn't... Like, they just had the author's name. And I just didn't put the two pieces together. And so it wasn't until, like, much later that I realized, like, wait a second. Isn't this the guy who does Scott Pilgrim? But I'm specifically talking about, like, Lost at Sea. At some point, I need to read Lost at Sea. Because I've also heard okay things about that. So yeah, uh, ending on a loss, whatever. Anything else? No, just go watch Scott Pilgrim. It's really good. It's it's not what I thought it was going to be, but I think it's kind of better for that. I think it's actually a better thing that they, you know, ch went in, updated the story, changed some things around, and yeah. And it, they, they got the original voice cast back, and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool, you know, and that's pretty cool, and it works really well. You know, they all do a good job. Alright, so I think that's where, you know, let's go do our outro. Um, so what's coming up in the next few weeks? Again, at some point I'll do the Five Nights at the Freddy's. I'm, I don't know, we did get a new trailer for the VR, and that does look interesting, but I don't have a PlayStation VR, and I'm not going to dump out like 600 bucks for one like maybe if i if one had gone on like sale for like real cheap this black friday i might have done it 
maybe like 200 bucks off. <laughs> but no, I never saw, I, I never even saw it go on sale. I don't even know if it did. So it's like, ah, that's, that's not enough for me. Oh, we got a Cali card. Neato. So yeah, I have no, I'm like, okay, you know, cool new FNAF. I'm sure I'll watch like Astral Spiff play it or something. And it comes out next month, which is wild. But I really do like FNAF VR. I have the original PSVR, which I did get for, uh, which that I got for like 120 bucks. And that was totally worth it. And I've enjoyed that. And yeah, playing, um, oh, we got the big man coat. Cool. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that. But no, um, yeah, no, it's, it's neat. But yeah, at some point I do want to do Ruin and, you know, like I said, I'm worried that I screwed up the endings, but whatever, you know, whatever, we'll figure it out. But this week is just kind of, it's been a busy week. And then there was Thanksgiving, which, ugh. Ugh. and then next week, next week I'm even busier, God. But at some point we'll do that, and at some point we'll sit down and do the Stanley Parable. I don't know, I got a clip from, from a Markiplier clip the other day on my TikTok feed that was just from his Stanley Parable playthrough. And I was like, yeah, God, this game is so good. God, I really need to play this again. But yeah, I th I, and I literally think that's it. Um, I did not. I have a copy of Super Mario RPG, have not touched it. And I think when I mentioned that last week, guess what, things hasn't changed this week. I still have not played it. So, yeah, um, anything else coming up? Not that I can think of. I mean, again, the Game Awards are in two weeks, but I'm not streaming it because I'm busy that night. We'll talk about it the next day. Um, and then we'll do the Stanley Parable at, at some point in, like, late December. And, like, probably, like, right before Christmas. I want to say... Maybe like the 21st? I don't know. Whatever that Saturday is. Maybe... Maybe the 20... Yeah, maybe the 21st? Or no, wait. The Saturday is the... Tw the Saturday is the 23rd. But that's the day before Christmas. God, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll do Stanley Parable at some point. And then we've got Game of the Year, of course. Come, my personal top ten Game of the Year, which... Oh my god, that's going to be the long... That's going to be the hardest thing to write. Oh, fuck. Like, that's... What is going to be my Game of the Year? So many options. And I have... I've already played more games this year... Than like last like last year I want to say we only had like twenty things to choose from. This year I think we're at like forty. Now it was probably more than twenty. I, I, I guess it was like twenty five. But this year, yeah, I think we're at like forty. And there's still still some shit I have to play. Like there's still some like indie games that I'm like, oh yeah, I want to play this before the end of the year. I I saw Tim Tim was on sale, which if you don't know, Tim Tim is the Pokemon ripoff. It's like an always online Pokemon ripoff that I have some serious problems with. But I'm kind of like, I was kind of like curious and I was like, oh, it's on sale, 50% off. Maybe. But like, it's an always online multiplayer game, which again, I know some people really wanted, but uh, I don't know. It feels like people who, you know, when you always hear those things about like, Oh, you know, fan, you know, Pokemon needs to take more fan influence, right? Fan-made Pokemon. And then you see fan-made Pokemon with, like, Snakewood or Uranium, and it's like, oh, this is the dumbest shit in the world. Temtem's not that bad, but it's still got some things where it's like, okay, these are clear, like, the reason the modern Pokemon games don't do this is just because they're bad features, and you wanting to, like, replicate that ain't great. Like, I think the idea that Temtem has a Nuzlocke mode is really cool. Like, you know, people really like that. So having that as a mode in the game is really cool. Like, I'm glad for people who have that. But, like, the, the whole way they did the EXP share... Like, the modern-day EXP share is done for a very specific reason. 
And then, you know, talking down to the players and being like, oh, this is a baby mode for little babies. Are you going to use this, you little baby? You loser. You going to cry? And it's just like, that's not how you do a fucking game, man. And that's not even taking accessibility into account. Like, <sighs> but I was like, you know, as part of me still wants to buy it. and then pl I almost had it for like 10 bucks at one point. Because old PlayStation thing, but that's a whole other thing. But I was like, part of me wants to just play Temtem, just for the point of being like, I played, I played this Pokemon ripoff, so you don't have to. Because I think that would be funny. But whatever. I don't know. I hope the DLC for this comes out soon. Oh, we have the Pokemon DLC in December as well. God, I, I'm we a bunch of people got previews on that. I still don't know if my baby boy's in it, or if I'll be able to bring up my baby boy, baby girl. I think I've always just called it a baby boy. Um, but I'm actually really, ex I'm I'm actually really excited for the Pokemon DLC. Right, it's gonna be cool to bring up my Duraldon, who is, I <laughs> needs I need to put some levels into, because it's actually kind of, not. I don't remember how to gain levels really quick. And Sword and Shield. Outside of just bum rushing the Elite Four again, I don't remember where the quick level up spot is. Unless it was always the Elite Four, which wouldn't surprise me either. I'm rambling at this point. Whatever. Um, so yeah, we'll be back, you know, some point with FNAF. Probably sooner than that. Or probably yeah, sooner than that, probably sadly. We'll be back with another in chat. And yeah. December is literally like a week. I think it's a week from today. So crazy. But with that, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Till next time. Peace.